Good day, Babylonians! My name is Songs of Rays, and welcome to another Legendary Guide. I'm going to be guiding you through the gun that is known as the Master Tool today, and what makes this special is the Tier 3 mod called Dome of Protection. Now, every time you get a killing shot with this gun, you summon a bullet-stopping dome for 5 seconds, and this refreshes every 5 seconds, so in theory, you can actually keep this dome just constantly moving around you, and the dome spawns on top of you, so it gives you a little bit of protection against bullet-type enemies. Now, unfortunately, what I did find is that it did absolutely nothing to the beast enemies, so this is purely for missions like Frontline, where you're just going to be facing a lot of bullets that are going to be getting incoming fire that are going to be coming your way. It does absolutely nothing to ranged abilities. It is just purely from the bullets that they shoot out from their guns. Now what we find with quite a lot of the mods that are in this game is that the kind of simulate another class's ability. So for example the uh, the golem effect that's on the golem's limb, that's very very similar to that of activating golem when you're a devastator. Um, things like that inflict slow are very similar to that of trickster. Now this dome of protection you would think is very very similar to the slow field that they have access to but in, in, in many ways this is very different. Now the slow field still allows bullets to pass through and they just come through quite slowly so they're, they're easy enough to dodge uh, and it also affects any enemies that do walk in whereas this one stops the bullets dead. They literally cannot move through this dome. They, it's, it's almost as if Neo was just stopping the bullets with his hand and they just stay there and as soon as the dome uh, is finished they just fall to the floor. It's quite interesting to watch and there's going to be a little bit of gameplay in the background just to show that off but essentially yeah the, 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 you'd think there would be some similarities but it's, it's better to think of these as two completely different domes. So what will this dome protect you against and what won't it? Well, melee attacks or any kind of characters that does that, whether it be humanoid or whether it be beast, will just run through this no problem. Uh, there's no slow effect on them whatsoever, they literally just run straight through it as if there's nothing there and come and smack you. Uh, anything that's uh, ability based, so charge up times like mortar shells or uh, the broodmother's kind of abilities that do range, those still go through just fine, it doesn't stop anything to do with that. Uh, the shotgunners and the riflemen that come as, as humanoid kind of things, uh, those, those, those shooting, uh, including snipers as well, as far as I can tell, the, the bullets will stop dead that one when it hits the dome. So as long as you stay inside there, you do, you never have to worry about those kind of enemies, uh, which is it's quite nice. I, mean, I know the community is very, very kind of upset about the snipers and uh, how, how kind of overpowered they are compared to everyone else. Um, but this this will give you some kind of protection. It'll give you a little bit of breathing space, especially as this is designed to be able to sit back. So you, you shouldn't be facing any kind of like melee characters or anything at the range that you should be intending to use this. Now, I've paired this with Embalmer's Rage because the crit multiplier that's on this gun of 250% is quite high. And the fact that this can be spammed quite uh, quite massively for the bit of having a 500 rounds per minute and of being an assault rifle means you've got a lot of ammo, you've got the crit multiplier that's there that it pushes this to extremes, and just, get, just getting the kill uh, will obviously then give you the dome and then give you, for the same amount of time, it will also then give you crits as well. And I think that was a nice little pairing, and it, it kind of shows that in the gameplay as to... In, in other gameplays where I've struggled with other guns, this one just seemed to go through nice and easy. Uh, I normally struggle when it comes to Moloch. Uh, I absolutely hate doing Frontline just purely for the boss, and he just really winds me up. But this one kind of made mincemeat of the, everything beforehand, and then going into the boss fight, I actually still felt kind of comfortable doing it. So, if you're looking for kind of like a range kind of build, especially as a Technomancer, I would actually recommend this gun. Uh, the crit, it has a role for crit damage, the status power and the skills life leech, okay, is there, it's nice, but it would be better to have some kind of like damage, so long range damage would have been nicer on this, but obviously we can't roll that and we can't choose that, so... It's, it's still a nice gun. It's not necessarily top tier, but it is one that actually is kind of fun to pick up and it is kind of fun to use uh, and it's still kind of worthwhile, uh, but obviously that, that depends on your kind of playstyle. This gun comes with a magazine of 15 as standard. Now, I would recommend if you were going to use this kind of gun, you would want to be doing a firepower kind of base build and you would then want to have the extra 50% magazine on classes that actually have that capstone. Um, Push, push, pushing this up to 23 if I remember right, so it does actually go a little bit over 50%, which is quite nice, but putting it up to 23 is a godsend. Uh, the 15, you go through that so quickly. Now, magazine kind of refilling perks, 
those are very very much needed. You, you don't really want to be reloading this gun, uh, otherwise you will be re reloading this a lot due to the, its low clip size. So I did find that my Blighted Rounds build for this were actually kind of benefited and it was quite nice. I am half tempted to take this into a CT-15 because of how impressed I was with the testing that I might see how, how far I can actually get with this. I think it's worth a go. Obviously the damage is definitely not as much as the, uh, the Earthbound burst rifle and obviously doesn't have the crit multiplier and the crit damage and all those are nice rolls but i do think it could be interesting to test it out just to give it a quick go um i do think you would probably get quite far with the challenge tiers if you had a build dedicated to kind of like mid to long range with this but anything that's like a, a trickster or anything like that i uh, or a devastator i don't think you're going to benefit from this in whatsoever so the the dome is quite nice in that sense because Especially as a Devastator, you, you, you'll you be wanting to get up close, you'll be you'll be worried about those kind of like bullet builds, you'll be wanting, worried about those snipers that are out there trying to do. And that allows you to get up close, be able to get that killing blow, deal with any other enemies that are still within close range, and not have to worry about everyone else that's shooting you in the back while you do it. Same with the trick stub, but in another way that you've got the dome, you've got the slow dome, and then you can proc this as well, just in the downtime. And I think that that makes a nice little balance. You, technically, you shouldn't be shot as a trickster in theory with this mod. Um, and I, I think that's a nice, that's a nice addition. That's a nice potential like balance and and a combination for a trickster. But un unfortunately, I don't have a trickster leveled up high enough to be able to give that a go just yet. So I think I might keep that just uh, just to see if we can have just constant domes and uh, see what kind of cooldown we can get on there. The be all and end all is would I recommend this gun or would I recommend the mod? Now the mod can is a bit niche. It's it's nice, but I, I don't think obviously everyone kind of focuses on the increased damage kind of aspects when it comes to mods. So it's not top tier, but is it nice to have as like utility maybe as like on a second gun for when if you're running like a rounds based uh, class to be able to give yourself a little bit of survivability to wait until your cooldown's done. I guess so. I, th I think if you found a nice, a nice enough gun for this to actually go on to, and uh, that you can reliably get a kill without your rounds, then yeah, I, I would, I would recommend that. Um, especially for like the squishier classes, I think, I think that would be not a bad shout in all fairness. Uh, but the mod, like I said, the mod is niche. The gun is okay. It, it could do with a little bit more damage. It kind of had to rely on Embalmer's Rage to be able to constantly do that damage output as well as my blighted rounds. So by itself, it's not amazing, but. I, I would recommend this to you to give it a go. Uh, I think this is a personal preference kind of thing, depending on if you like semi-autos or if you prefer full auto kind of guns. The Like I said, the mod's slightly better than the gun, I do feel, uh, just because it only had one good roll out of the three that it could have had, and the other two are just kind of like negligible, really. So, yeah, take the mod off, have a bit of a play around, see if you can find, you can find some nice combos that will go with this and see if there's any other classes that can benefit from this. And that is it, Babylonians. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something useful from the gameplay that's in the background. If you did, please drop us a like and subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. The channel is starting to grow, and only 10% of you are currently subbed. So it would mean the world to me if you could actually drop that. In which case, I'll see you on the next one. Keep yourself well. Keep yourself safe.